This tutorial is going to cover everything that you need to know about the basics of creating uh, a camera and its settings. It's going to be quite in depth so I will put timestamps in the description below so you can jump to the different areas that you are interested in. So to start with I'm going to cr create a camera. So I can go to create cameras and then camera. We have the choice of a few different cameras. Uh, I will cover the others later. So to start with just create a normal camera. And then in my outliner I'm going to double click and I'm going to name it. You can use your own um, naming convention but I'm going to use uh, CM for camera underscore shot uh, 010 the shot one. And so if I press F that's going to frame the camera and okay here he is he's so tiny um, so what I'm going to do is just use the scale tool to scale it up. Scale doesn't have any effect on the camera apart from how big the camera icon is. And so we can move the camera and rotate the camera as we normally would. Um, but we can't see what the camera sees. Um, so we can actually look through the camera. Uh, by going to panels, look through selected. When I do that, Maya's now telling me I'm looking through CM shot 010 and I can see what the camera sees. And if I move and pan around here, it's actually moving and panning around the scene as well. I can also do something which is called panels, tear off copy. And what this does is it will tear off a copy of my uh, view. And then I can come in here and choose the perspective. Now with dual monitors, I can put this on my second monitor, but you guys wouldn't see it then. So I'll just leave it here. So with the camera selected, here it is. If I move this in my perspective, I can see an instant update. So it's really handy um, to get that update. So before I position my camera, uh, I want to go into the render settings because at the moment I can't see my resolution gate, I can't see what I'm going to be rendering exactly. So if I open up the render settings using this little clapperboard and the settings icon and on the common tab scroll down and we want to set the image size. So mine's set to HD 1080, that will be my final output so I'm okay to leave it at that. You want to set this to whatever you're going to be using. So now on the camera, if we come up here and click the resolution gate, Maya is going to show us a bounding box and anything within this bounding box is going to be rendered. So now I can actually position my camera and see exactly um, what the camera is going to see. One thing that is really handy is, let's say I just did that and I've messed up my shot, I want to go back. If you use the square bracket keys, you can cycle back and forth between the different positions of the camera. So that's really useful. If you ever knock a camera out of place, you can use the square brackets. But also, once you're happy with the positioning of your camera, you, you can lock the attributes so you don't accidentally do that. Okay, so with the camera selected, I'm going to go to the attribute editor and we're going to work through the camera settings. So the first one at the top is the control. So if we look, we can turn this camera into a camera, camera name, camera aim and up. So if I just switch to a different scene, this is a normal camera and this is a camera with an aim. So the difference is that this camera is uh, constrained to this aim. So wherever we move this camera it is always going to point towards that point and if we always move this point the camera is always going to point towards it so it's important that you understand what you need to achieve in your shot and which of these is going to be um, better with the aim you, know, you could actually parent constrain it to an object 
and then when you move the object the aim moves with it so that's quite useful if you're tracking something obviously if I were to take both of these and move them up this camera just moves in Y it doesn't rotate but you can still achieve the same thing by just animating on the Y and rotating manually it's just a bit easier if you're tracking something to use the camera and aim so that's the difference it's really important that you have some understanding of um, real world cameras when you're using cameras in Maya um, because they are emulating them so a focal length of 35 is quite a standard lens um, it's not a lot wide nor close up um, and by default whenever you create a camera in Maya it's going to be 35mm and the worst thing that you can do is just leave it alone Okay, you need to figure out what you want this shot to look like um, if you want it to be in a wide angled shot you know, a wide shot then we can change to something like 24mm okay and I haven't moved the camera the camera is in the exact same spot all I've done is change the focal length to have be a wider lens so it shows more of the image okay and if I were to do the opposite and say go to something like an 85 okay I haven't moved the camera I've just changed the focal length but the focal length is now become tighter and it zoomed in so now we see less of our scene so for something like a 65 so when you've you've decided what kind of focal length you want now we can reposition the camera um, let's go for something like this so angle of view is dependent on focal length so if you change one it's going to change the other one so I recommend just focusing on the focal length and then just the angle of view will update automatically. Um, near and far clipping plane on anything that are related to real world cameras. It's just something that tells Maya how far or close to the camera to render something. So if I'll show you, if I set the near clipping plane to something like four, you can see that I've lost some of my geometry. Haven't moved the camera, haven't lost the geometry it's just that I've told Maya to not render anything that is closer than four units from the camera so Maya is only rendering from four units away and beyond so you want your near clipping plane default values should work but if you're finding that stuff is clipping towards the camera then you can just make this value smaller telling Maya to render everything basically up to the camera and if you find that stuff you've got a, a big scene and it's clipping stuff far away then you can add a couple more zeros okay film back um, this is generally used when you are working on a VFX shot so if you're doing match moving uh, in Maya then you will need to make sure that the film gate and the film back are set to the exact same size as the camera that you shot any footage with um, but with um, animation um, it doesn't necessarily need to be set the next thing I'm going to talk about is the depth of field okay so to turn on depth of field we just need to turn it on in our camera's attributes um, and then I'm going to turn wireframe off so I've turned depth of field on and everything in my scene some of it's gone a bit blurry and so we need to set the depth of field settings so the first one is focus distance focus distance is the point at which is completely in focus okay and this is based on distance from the camera um, so we can choose an object or a point in the scene that we want to be in focus so if it was this um, handle for example 
With this selected, if I go to display, heads up display, and check object details, this will turn on this information here, which is already on, but and it tells me the distance from camera. So the distance from camera of this is 2.493. So I can go into the camera settings and put 2.493 on the focus distance. And we'll see that now this area is in focus. If you select, um, for example, if I select this whole case, Maya is telling me the distance is 2.954 and Maya will create a bounding box around whatever you've got selected and put that distance from camera point in the center. Okay, so it's useful if you select smaller parts of your object and you'll get a more accurate distance from camera. The other way that you can do it is if you go to create measure tools and you use the distance tool you can snap one point of the distance tool to your camera and the second to a specific point on your geometry back to the camera so the next thing that we need to change is the f-stop so f-stop is um, on a real camera again really important that you do some research and understand but if we have a look at this image here, higher f-stop values equal more depth of field and lower f-stop values equal less depth of field. So the depth of field is the point from the focus distance and how far it takes to fall off to the point where it's completely blurred. So if we put this value to something like we'll see that the background has blurred um, and if we go even smaller like 1.4 even more of the background is blurred so the area from here before it becomes out of focus is less we have a shallower depth of field and if I were to go to something like 16 to a larger f-stop value you'll see that we can't really even see anything that is out of focus because the point at which it becomes out of focus is, is further away than our scene stretches. It's a wider depth of field. So that's how you set depth of field. Um, let's say we want to do a focus pull. So I'm going to set my f-stop to quite a low value, like 1.4. Okay, and at the point we are focusing on this handle with the camera selected, um, on frame one I'm going to right click and set a key on my focus distance. And then um, let's say we focus pull over two seconds, I want to focus pull to this pillar. So with that selected, my is telling me it's 3.843 away from the camera. So if I go back to my camera and type in 3.483, press enter, we can see this is now blurred and this is now in focus, right click, set a second key. So now, we scrub, the focus is shifting and so you can get a really nice effect with this. One thing to note when using depth of field is that it will increase your render times um, and once you've rendered it you can't change anything. So another, an alternative um, route to getting depth of field in your shots is if you render out a z-depth pass um, and then you use that to um, fake the depth of field in your um, compositing software. So I will create a tutorial on that um, to show you how to export a Z-Z path and how to composite it for depth of field.